Things that children do that annoy adults. From the New York Times, the title of the story is ADHD seen in 11% of U.S. children as diagnoses rise. And it's really nothing new. But the numbers are quite startling to demonstrate the extent to which this problem has reached into American life now. Nearly one in five high school age boys in the United States and 11% of school age children overall have received a medical diagnosis of ADHD according to new data from the CDC. The figures show that an estimated 6.4 million children ages 4 through 17 had received an ADHD diagnosis at some point in their lives, a 16% increase since 2007, and a 41% rise in the past decade. About two-thirds of those with a current diagnosis receive prescriptions for stimulants like Ritalin or Adderall, which can drastically improve the lives of those with ADHD, but can also lead to addiction, anxiety, Anxiety and occasionally psychosis. You would think that that you would think that that would be a uh, cause for concern. That, that that would give some people pause. But just just to give you a, a, a little little a little taste of some of the potential uh, adverse effects during chronic use of methyl phenidate, and I believe that's uh, Ritalin. Because Adderall is actually uh, actually an amphetamine precursor, and the people that are drugging their kids are subjecting them to uh, a number of destructive adverse reactions, including abdominal pain, uh, akesthesia, which is the technical term for restlessness when it's a side effect of a drug. When it's a imagined disease, in order to come up with an excuse for giving a drug, it's called ADHD. But when it's a side effect of the drug, they call it akathisia, restlessness. Alopecia, loss of air. Anger, angina, that's chest pain. Appetite loss, anxiety. Blood pressure and pulse changes, both up and down. Cardiac arrhythmia, depression, diaphoresis, dizziness, dyskinesia, euphoria or dysphoria, headache, hypersensitivity, including skin rash, urticaria, fever, arthralgia, Exfoliate dermatitis, erythmia multiforma, necrotizing vasculitis, and thrombocytopenic purpura, lethargy, libido increased or decreased. I know that's not a big uh, problem for kids under 12. Mania or hypomania, nausea, palpitations, pupil dilation, psychosis, and psychotic disorders. Stimulants above the recommended dose level are associated with higher levels of psychosis, substance misuse, and psychiatric admissions. Short-term weight loss, somnolence, stunted growth, suicidal ideation, tachycardia, and xerostomia. Geez, you think suicidal ideation, thats, that's uh, a, a, this is a side effect of the drug, is you think about suicide. Not just think about suicide, excuse me, ideation specifically refers to conceiving of a vision of your own suicide. You think that has anything to do with the rise of teen suicides or shooting events? Jeez. That and, of course, SSRIs overprescribed for depression and um, all the SSRI-induced shootings that we've seen recently. And even more teenagers are likely to be prescribed medication in the near future because the American Psychiatric Association plans to change the definition of ADHD to allow more people to receive the diagnosis and treatment. It wasn't enough that they could rip off as many as they are. No, they have to, they have to broaden the net of people to be roped into this racket of prescription drugs. ADHD is described by most experts as resulting from abnormal chemical levels in the brain that impair a person's impulse control and attention skills. <laughs> All right, now this is where it gets really ridiculous. What causes ADHD? Possibly a uh, nature deficit disorder, keeping children stuck in cemetery rows of seats, you know, that they affectionately call what they do to kids in schools, or forcing them to sit down, eliminating PE, things like that. No, that's, that's not one of them. It's a chemical level Im Im impairment. That's why you, we need a chemical solution. And this is, the, this is the biggest scam of modern psychology, is that they, they tell you that your 
disorders of function are based on chemical imbalances, not on negative thought patterns that you are in control of, that you could change through therapy, through behavioral efforts, through other forms of treatment that don't involve putting money towards pharmaceuticals. So this is from Wikipedia for causes. The specific causes of ADHD are not known. There are, however, a number of factors that may contribute to or exacerbate ADHD. They include genetics, diet, and the social and physical environments. They don't know what causes ADHD, but let's see, we can make some money by selling a chemical solution. Let's be the most experts, according to the New York Times, who say that it results from abnormal chemical levels. Yeah! Now this is really fun, because diet, like that's a serious problem. You think if, if people are designed to eat natural foods and you give them nothing but high fructose corn syrup and processed crap, that it's not going to affect their brains a little bit? That a kid's metabolism is not going to be thrown off when you poison them because the FDA said your food was okay. This is really for parents. Like, please. Genetics. Now, there's a talk about a genetic uh, link to ADHD. And if you think about it as a, a hyperactivity or, or a risk-taking kind of uh, personality type phenomenon, yeah, of course there's going to be a genetic component. But what was really interesting here was the evolution theory. At more than 1% of the population, researchers have proposed that the high prevalence of ADHD may be due to natural selection, having favored ADHD, possibly because the individual traits may be beneficial on their own and only become dysfunctional when these traits combine to form ADHD. Yeah, you, the, the kids with ADHD, they're like super, super evolved, right? Well, in a sense, yeah, because this is the natural state of a, a child's mind to be engaged in learning and assimilating information, to be hyperactive, to be always engaging and experimenting and trying new things and getting out and learning and figuring out how to function to make themselves happy, to, to be functioning members of society, to, to be self-guided learners, not to have information crammed down their throats. And by the way, the reason the government wants that is because it's propaganda. It conditions them to be obedient little wage slaves. And when that doesn't work, we'll convince the parents to drug them. Other theories. Executive functions. Now, this is the one that makes sense. Cognitive processes that regulate, control, and manage other pr cognitive processes are termed executive functions. Examples of such regulated processes are planning, working memory, attention, inhibition, mental flexibility, and initiation monitor and initiation and monitoring of actions. These are things you have to train kids to do, not drug them when they fail to do them. These are things that require education, guidance, parenting, environmental. Twin studies have shown that ADHD is largely genetic. So that goes out. But alcohol intake during pregnancy can cause the child to have a fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, which can include symptoms similar to ADHD. Well, what do we do? We'll just drug them back to health. Diet, yes. Social. The World Health Organization states that the diagnosis of ADHD can represent family dysfunction or inadequacies in the educational system rather than individual psychopathology. That's okay. We'll just turn to drugs instead of, of addressing that one. Social construct theory. The social construction theory states that it is societies that determine where the line between normal and abnormal behavior is drawn. The society members, including physicians, parents, teachers, and others, are the ones who determine which diagnostic criteria are applied and thus determine the number of people affected. This is exemplified in the fact that the DSM-4 arrives at levels of ADHD three to four times higher than those obtained with the use of the ICD. That's a different diagnostic uh, standard. Thomas Saz, a proponent of this theory, has argued that ADHD was invented and not discovered. All right, so now back to the people that are trying to, to, to widen the net. While some doctors and patient advocates have welcomed rising diagnosis rates as evidence that the disorder is being better recognized and accepted, others said that the new rate suggested that millions of children may be taking medications merely to calm behavior or to do better in school. Pills that are shared with or sold to classmates, diversion long tolerated in college settings and gaining traction in high achieving schools are particularly dangerous, doctors say, because of their health risks when abused. No kidding. Now, one of them cited here said that he used to describe Adderall as safer than aspirin. 
Dr. Hallowell, who said that for years, says, I think now's the time to call attention to the dangers that can be associated with making the diagnosis in a slipshod fashion. That we have kids out there getting these drugs to use them as mental steroids. That's dangerous. And I hate to think I had a hand in creating that problem. Experts cited several factors in the rising rates. Some doctors are hastily viewing any complaints of attention as full-blown ADHD. They said while pharmaceutical advertising emphasizes how medication can substantially improve a child's life, moreover, they said some parents are pressuring doctors to help with their children's troublesome behavior and slipping grades. Yeah. Be a parent? No. Fuck no. Just give them some pills. 15% of high school of, of school age boys have received an ADHD diagnosis. The rate for girls was 7%. Oh, yeah. Things that children do to annoy adults. Diagnosis among those of high school age were particularly high. 10% for girls and 19% for boys. About 1 in 10 high school boys currently takes ADHD medication. And believe it or not, this is kind of a southern problem. Arkansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, South Carolina, and Tennessee showed 23% receiving diagnosis. Colorado, Nevada, less than 10%. The medications, Adderall, Ritalin, Concerta, Vivancy, I haven't even heard of those last two. Because the pills can vastly improve focus and drive among those with perhaps only traces of the disorder, an ADHD diagnosis has become a popular shortcut to better grades. Really? A shortcut to better grades. Now, the idea that recognizing the disorder better is a good thing, I, 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 I want to say yes, I agree with in the sense that it's good that we're having this ability to recognize patterns of thought that we don't think are good for us, that, that we don't like, that we can take control of our state of mind and we can address these. But if you just do a little bit of research, parents, and find that there are other ways to address these problems, we can take advantage of, you know, the internet where you can search for anything and you can find advice for how to deal with it that doesn't involve taking pills. Whereas you go to a doctor, what are they going to do? But it's worse because part of this racket is how they play off the fears of the parents. Several doctors mentioned that advertising from the pharmaceutical industry that played off parents' fears, showing children struggling in school or left without friends, encouraged parents and doctors to call even minor symptoms ADHD and try stimulant treatment. For example, a pamphlet for Vivance from its manufacturer, Shire, shows a parent looking at her son and saying, I want to do all I can to help him succeed. And I'm sorry, parents, but if you believe that, and you believe that Vivance is, is definitely the way that you want to do all that you can to help him succeed as opposed to actually being a parent. You're a sucker. Stale, sales of stimulants to treat ADHD. By the way, they, they, these are mostly, um, or Adderall, at least. It's amphetamines. You're drugging your kid. Sales of stimulants to treat ADHD have more than doubled to $9 billion in 2012 from $4 billion in 2007 according to the healthcare information company IMS Health. Criteria for the proper diagnosis. To be released next month in the fifth edition of the DSM has been changed to specifically allow more adolescents and adults to qualify. The final wording has not been released, but most proposed changes would lead to higher rates of diagnosis. The requirement that symptoms appear before age 12 rather than 7 Illustrations like repeatedly losing one's cell phone or losing focus during paperwork that emphasize that ADHD is not just a young child disorder and the requirement that symptoms merely impact daily activities rather than cause impairment. So they're going to extend this racket now to the parents, to the adults. Geez, do you have a child who's suffering from nature deficit disorder, who, who you think can't go outside because they might get germs or get a little dirty. You can't let them go and play like kids. And do you, do you, as a result, have a stressed child in your home? Well, you can drug him too. But you can drug yourself first because if this results in, in you having a little stress and you lose your cell phone occasionally or you feel a little bit of anxiety or while you're doing paperwork, while you're filling out tax forms for the IRS, maybe, maybe you'll lose a little focus. Are you a normally functioning human being with a range of emotions? Well, then clearly, you need some pills for that. You don't have constitutional rights. You have natural rights. Guys, critical. It's the it's the blueprint of the nation.
You could remain a sniveling little bitch, hiding your insecurity 